Hey, Desmond Du here from No Sleep Creative. Today we're going to continue from where we left off with recreating a scene from Andrew Vaco's film From Nothing to Something. I hope you love the show today. In the previous tutorial, we covered making the background, and we still need to make the fake 3D balls and the inspiration wood ramp. There are three balls that appear, one that reveals the ramp, another one that the camera focuses on, and the last one that hides the ramp. As for the inspiration word ramp, it consists of 8 text boxes, and when you mask it out, you can see it's distorted in this fashion. Now that we understand how everything works, let's begin this tutorial. We will first create a word ramp in Adobe Illustrator. You should have 8 inspiration text boxes aligned in a row. Select the middle tree and go to Object Envelope Distort, make with mesh, and you want to set the rows to 1 and 4 columns. Click OK, and using the direct selection tool, the shortcut A, we're going to se select the middle points and change our scale to with S, and we can just bounce the middle like that. And I'm just going to undo that and just double click on the scale tool and just enter the magic numbers that I use, which is 300 by about 390. So click OK and it'll bulge like that. And now we can create a pinch by grabbing the left side. We can pinch from the left and just, you know, I'm using uh, the arrow keys to nudge it to the left. So we get that uh, a more steeper uh, uphill. And we can do the opposite for on the right hand side. I'm going to use the, my direct selection tool and select all the four anchor points at the end and shift it towards the right. And feel free to play around with, you know, you can still make modification by selecting anchor points of the middle one and the one on the right and use the scale tool to just kind of adjust the type of ramp that you want. And once you're done, what you want to do is to just, you know, connect your inspiration, the other rows, the other boxes with the inspiration text together. Like that. So this is a replication I came up with. Once I made the RAM, I scaled it up to about 15,000 pixel by 1080 pixel for easy compositing After Effects. Now that we're done, we can go on to After Effects to create the flat 3D balls. In After Effects, create a full HD comp and call it ball underscore texture. What you want to do first is to create four shape layers, each of them a quarter of the composition width and color them accordingly. Once we have made this texture, let's create another composition and then let's drop in our ball texture and we're going to go to the effects and preset panel and type in CC sphere. Double click on it to apply the effect. And we can go into light and shading and set everything to zero. Except for the ambient, which should be 100. So now we can go into rotation and scrub the rotation Y. And we can cycle through the color texture that we made. We're going to write an expression to connect the rotation Y to the X position. So option click on the stopwatch and then let's open up a position by pressing P and right click to separate dimension. We just want the X position and let's hold shift and press EE to show expression. And the expression goes like this. Factor is equals to eight semicolon value plus pick width to the X position divided by the factor semicolon. So when I grab this ball texture and move it left, right, you can see it's rolling accordingly. And if I move to the right, it's rolling as well. And if you want the ball to roll faster, you can reduce the factor to maybe something like two. And you can see it's rolling faster. This is handy because a bigger ball will roll in lesser increment. So play around with the factor value and see what works for you. Next, I'm going to copy this layer over here and I'm going to name it ball underscore one and maybe label it green. So I'm going to copy it, Command C, and go to my RAM com over here. So I dropped in the, uh, the PNG I made from Adobe Illustrator. As you can see, it's 15,000 about by, by 1080 pixel, and click OK. So I already have some markers lined up for us to time the animation to speed things up. I'm going to paste my ball over here. And before we proceed, let's create a mat to review the RAM. And we want to go into our rectangle tool and double click on it. And then we want to position it just in the middle of the ball. And we also actually want it to be longer. So let's actually scale it up to about 200%. And then let's, uh, let's shift it 
back into the middle. Okay, something like that. And you want to parent it, parent this mat to the ball. And let's rename this to mat. And let's get a blending mode and set it to stencil alpha. You want to put the mat beneath the ball. And now when the ball is animated like this, we can see, let's just say, let's just, just test that. As the ball move, it's going to review the ramp, right? Because of the stencil alpha blending mode. So we can animate the ball going from, from off the screen and then up to about here, about 22 frames, it's going to review. It's going to go up to somewhere past near the start of the, the uphill. So since we don't see this ball after it goes past the screen, we're just going to just have it animate all the way to review our, to review our RAM. Yes, and then we can delete this last keyframe. So let's play and see what happens. There you go. So we're just going to review the RAM as, as once it go past the screen. Now, you want to duplicate this ball, and then we're going to shift it you know, down to my marker over here. And, I, and in this case, I am actually going to just delete the keyframe over here. So we're just going to go all the way across the screen to, to, to the right-hand side. And I'm going to make the duration somewhere about, uh, yeah, somewhere to the end of this marker over here. So you also want to bring up the scale. Let's press S. And then I set the keyframes to when it reaches, when it touches, when it goes up here. So somewhere here. Let's set a keyframe here. And when it reaches the apex somewhere here, let's go increase it up to something like that. And then when it grows down, you want to set it back to 100. So, and then, there, there you go. It's going to roll past. Next, we're going to make the last ball that will hide the ramp. So we just need to duplicate the first ball and the mat we created and put it on top. I'm going to change the label to purple. And then I'm just going to move my keyframe, uh, move my layer to somewhere here. And I'm going to press U to open up my keyframes. So we don't need to have it roll. Uh, from the start, we can have it start like somewhere over here already. Somewhere, yeah, somewhere here. We'll delete the keyframe at the start and just push it at the front. So we're just going to roll towards the end. And then, so what we want to do is to uh, select the mat and change it to silhouette alpha. So this will hide it. So uh, as, it, as it goes, as you play it, you know, it's rolling and it's going to appear out of nowhere and hide it, hide the rest of the RAM. So let's play it from the start. As you can see, it looks kind of awkward that the RAM suddenly appear and also get cut off in the middle. But we're going to use camera and we're going to make use of a camera to just focus on one area. So it's not a big problem. Also, one thing to note is that you can see that the ball is rolling really fast. That's because I set the factor down to 2. So maybe you want to change it back to 8. Right? And let's do it. Do that for the rest of the ball. So I already prepared other ball texture of different colors over here. So I'm going to go into the RAM and just, you know, select my ball tree and hold option and just replace it. And if you click on the layer name, you can see that it's been replaced. I'm going to do, th do the same thing for ball number two, grab ball texture two, hold option, and just drag and drop on top of it. So all you have to do now is to finesse the timing of the animation, but we'll move on for now. So now we reach the final part of the tutorial, and here's my animation process. I already have my background fading in for the first eight seconds and a text animation done up, which is just a bunch of text layer and shape layer, something that you can easily create on your own. Next, we're gonna bring in the RAM animation that we made and then also select the text animation and make it 3D. Right click to create a new camera and then click OK. So I'm going to label the camera green. Also, let's position the RAM in, uh, to the left-hand side of the scene. So I'm going to select my RAM and uh, let's shift it to the left side like that. So that's pretty good. And I'm going to just have it start at this marker over here. I'm going to go into my camera, press P, put a keyframe down at, w at where this marker begins and go down to my apex marker over here. 
and I'm going to just move down the x-axis to somewhere around here. It'll be good. And then let's go to the end. And let's go animate the rest of the camera going across the ramp. So somewhere around here. Let's select our keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease out, and open up the graph editor and make some modification. So I'm just going to make it start slower and then it goes faster. And then some, I'm going to make my animation curve something like that. So it's still, after it goes past the apex somewhere here, it's still going to be fast. So let me just shift this curve like that. So be patient with this process. And let's make it steeper, something like that. And let's play it and see what happens. So it's going slow, it's revealing. Yes, it works. So you can finesse the animation if you want. But I'm gonna just move on for now and just put in the background. So if you watched the previous tutorial, we made this background over here. I went back to the project file and actually render out a wider version. So the size now is about 2600 by 1080. I'm gonna drop it in into our project. We don't need to make it 3D, we're just gonna fake it. I'm gonna right click and, uh, and change it to a different color, orange, and place it somewhere where at, at the apex. So because that's the apex is where we see first see it. So we want to hide the one on the left hand side and then just review on the right. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna create a mass over here. Oh, and then uh, I am going to press M to review my mass, put a keyframe down, and also click invert and go down a couple of frames and just kind of hide the parts on the left hand side like that. And go down a few frames, do the same thing. I think at this point we can just review everything. So when we play it now, we can see the ramp. But we don't want it to play instantaneously, our, our background animation. So we can just use time remapping to have the animation start later. So we're going to animate time remapping and just grab the keyframe, both keyframes, and just move it down to somewhere around here, my marker. So when we see the ball landing, uh, almost a uh, few frames after the ball lands, uh, the, it's going to animate. The background is going to animate. Actually, we can push it even further if we want it to. So somewhere somewhere around here is where it begins. Yes. And then we want to also not have the background be so static. So let's simulate the camera movement. Press P to get a position. So let's have this be a final position. And then when it begins, when it goes down from when it goes down the ramp, when the ball goes on a ramp, let's have it just shift a little bit to the left. So there is some sort of movement like that. And we can just right click keyframe assistant, easy ease for now. And let's just align the keyframe to our camera. To our camera keyframe over here. Let's play it. So it's moving a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna nudge it to the right so we're almost done now we just need to kind of get the camera movement the simulated camera movement down for the background and i'm just gonna just see what values i use maybe it just needs to go there needs to be more movement so let me just uh, select the first keyframe and maybe just let's just do about 660 let's see what happens and instead of easy ease I might just want to do, uh, let's actually go back to linear and then do an easy ease in. And we're done. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Please like, share, and subscribe so this tutorial can get to more people. I hope you love this master study as much as I do. If you're interested in getting my tutorial project files, you can do so by making a monthly donation to my Patreon. That's all I have for you guys. I'll see you next time.